I have certain players that are our favorites. Certain players that, you know, if you ask me, all right, Shannon, so who do you think is the best at this position? Who do you think is is, is the, the most exciting? That kind of thing, right? So yesterday I did a redraft of the 2012 entry draft, and I saw Jacob Slavin as the 120th pick in 2012 for the Carolina Hurricanes, and I thought, what a steal. And to me, Jacob Slavin, yes, if I was drafting first and I had all of those names before me, I'm drafting Slavin first overall. And, you know, it's it's close between him and Pareko, and I'll explain why. There is a shortage in the NHL of defensemen who can do anything. Uh, on the physical side, on the uh, defensive side, offensive side, whatever you need in that moment, that defenseman can provide it. Jacob Slavin, when I, I first started doing this as, as you know, a regular hockey channel thing, when it wasn't just casual hockey fandom, uh, I came in here, 2015, 2016, after his rookie year, where he had 63 games played, two goals, 18 assists, 20 points, and averaged 20 minutes and 59 seconds on average. And my honest opinion at the time was, hey, he's probably okay, but if they're going to get uh, get things going there in Carolina, they're probably going to want to improve their defense. Honestly. And I didn't see just how good he was all around and just how fantastic a player he was all around until I started watching every single game that I could. This is one of those things with watching every single game, it, it does definitely make it so that there are players that I, I key in on and I say, you know what, I, I love that guy's game. With Slavin, if he played for a team like Boston, if he played in Toronto, if he played in a... In, in a, a New York, L.A., if he played somewhere that got a lot more press, he'd get a lot more attention. And he'd get more Norris votes. Now, the interesting thing is, at the point where this season stopped, he actually was being seen as one of the best, if not the best, defensive defensemen of the 2019-2020 season. So, his second year, which was the first year that I was watching him a lot, uh, 23 minutes and 26 seconds, so his ice time goes up, and he goes up to 34 points. Now, there are people who get blinded by points, who look at defensemen and go, this guy's the best defenseman, and they're just pointing out the guy who has the most points. Sometimes the best defenseman also happens to have the most points, but often that's not really the case when it comes to the best defensive defenseman. And with Slavin, there's kind of a little bit of both. So if you look at his progression, 20 points, 34, 30, 31, 36, well, it doesn't look that impressive, but... He hasn't missed a game here, right? He hasn't missed a game in those three seasons, despite him being a guy who blocks shots. He's not shy of hits. He doesn't get a lot of hits, but he's not shy of, of giving or taking a hit. Only 68 games played this year. So he's on pace for about 40 plus points. And he's still getting better. Every year he gets better. 377 games played overall. 151 points. His career average is 22 minutes and 45 seconds of ice time. This year he was up to 23 minutes and 24 seconds, which is the second most ice time he's had since his career started. The most was 2016-2017 when he had 23-26, and that's when he had the 34 points. I think there's more there. I think there's the potential for, for him to do kind of what Scott Niedermeyer did, not comparing the two exactly because Niedermeyer had more offensive skill than Slavin. But when Niedermeyer was in New Jersey, he put up decent point totals. But we knew, we thought, you know, if he goes somewhere else, he'll score more. And then he went to Anaheim and he did. Now, block shots, he had 107 this year. So he does block shots. Uh, giveaways, 49. Takeaways, 81. Very, very good defensive defenseman for the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, 210 minutes and 55 seconds worth of shorthanded ice time this season, which is number one on the Canes. What's interesting to me is, this is in an age, of course, where defensemen tend to be getting less power play time as it is, 62 minutes and 12 seconds in total on the power play for uh, Jacob Slavin. So that's where, that's where it's a little bit different, that he's not getting the power play time. It's possible that if he did get the power play time to match the shorthanded time, A, his, his minutes per game would go up. He'd be amongst the tops in the league. And we'd probably see more points. He's a good passer. He's a smart player. While he's very good defensively, he is also capable offensively. 32 even strength points. Three power play points. One shorthanded point this year. And 
three game-winning goals. So not only has he been able to provide that defensive side of the puck support, but he has also been a key guy when you need that big goal late. And he's had those three game-winning goals. Uh, I, I, And again, I understand there are people who think that I overrate Jacob Slavin. We've had this discussion for a while when I took when I ranked the best defenseman in the league last year I had Slavin pretty high up compared to where a lot of people who watch my videos think he should have been but I say again I think Jacob Slavin is that good and I think that when, while his totals have trended up this year I, I can't see why they don't continue to trend up as he gets older he will be relied on more by the Carolina Hurricanes I think eventually that power play ice time could end up being there. And again, I know defensemen don't get the ice time they used to. Now you've got four to four off, four forwards and a defenseman. Some teams go with five forwards depending on the situation on the power play. Uh, I I do think that he's capable. I I do sometimes think that the four forwards, one defenseman is a little too risky. It leads to some shorthanded opportunities that if there were two defensemen on the point, you may not see happen. But uh, we'll see what happens with Slavin if he does eventually get that opportunity on the power play because I think he's got a good shot. Uh, he, he had, I think, 141 shots it was this season, 4% shooting percentage. Uh, I, I definitely think there's a chance for, for more from him offensively. And honestly, it's just when you've got a guy who plays this ball defensively, he doesn't get hurt. He can give you 23-plus minutes per game. To me, he was the best guy in the 2012 draft. I understand. Uh, I, I, and I, you know, there are other players out of that draft that were pretty darn good. To me, Jacob Slavin was, was the best player available. So there you go. Uh, Jacob Slavin, who I think is the most, one of the most underrated players in the NHL. And I think it's just a matter of people don't see him very much. If you watch him a lot, you know how good he is. And again, when we get hockey back, it'll happen. There will be a day. Where we look outside and realize, hey, stuff's happening. But from now until then, I urge people to take my word for it. But if they won't, then the next time that the Carolina Hurricanes play, tune into their game. Watch Jacob Slavin. Try to isolate on him as much as you can. And you're going to see a defenseman that doesn't make you want to swear at your TV, if you're a Carolina fan. Uh, a defenseman who doesn't make a ton of mistakes. Uh, and and that's, that's the key. You know, it's funny, we, we talk a lot about defensive defensemen and, and uh, the Rod Langway Award and whether or not that should be a thing. I think Jacob Slavin's a perfect example of why it should be a thing. He's never going to get, like, Norris votes like the like the, the, the defenseman who gets 65, 70 points a season. It's not going to happen. But on the defensive side of the puck, if you're ahead by one goal, you've got two-plus minutes left in a game and they're going to have the extra attacker on and you've got to have that defenseman who can shut things down. Out of everybody in the league, Jacob Slavin's going to be one of the top guys that I would pick. And so, for that reason, I, I do think I do think he's underrated. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.